why hello and welcome everybody it is pox again so today i've got a fun video for you guys because i'm bringing back the death south build from a couple leagues ago so this go around instead of playing death south as an occultist and we're just going to do a short little explanation before i run into a map we're going to be playing it as a hierophant um, the main reason of hierophant over occultist is we're going to be scaling corpse damage via obliteration wants and we're going to be using pursuit of faith with the increased damage per monster killed to basically allow us to just keep on zooming. Then we have Ritual of an Awake of Awakening, which helps with really good sustain for bossing, and we get more damage per totem. I know it seems like a meme, but just wait. Uh, and then we've got Divine Guidance for the mom scaling, and we've and also the generic damage from Transfiguration of Mind, and Sanctuary of Thought for the massive AoE for your corpse explosions. Now, to get this up and running, all you really need is a five socket Death Oath. You're going to run a Swift Affliction, Conk Effect, Efficacy, Void Manip, Arcane Surge. Six Link is your or socket, is less duration, or Awakened Ink AoE if you're on Trade League. I'm using Bubonics. You don't need to use them. I just have to reroll my gear, essentially. And other than that, I'm, I got nothing. Literally, it's just two obliterations. The next step is your Cluster Jewels. Should be really easy in Trade League. You just need Large Chaos with eight, so two of them. Then you need four Aura Effect Clusters, ideally with five. You're looking for this modifier, which is 15% on each one of them. I do not have that. I only have one. My cluster jewels are really not that good. You can see in POB once you get it set up. And then for mana cluster jewels and small, uh, ideally you'd want four as well. Um, you can get four Eldritch Inspirations, which is Chaos Damage Overtime Multiplier, Maximum Mana, and Mana Regen. All sick. Next thing is an Essence Worm goes a really long way. Unfortunately, I do not have an Essence Worm, so I am reserving a shit ton of my mana which guts my aoe and my survivability i was using withering step but i wanted to drop it because every time my arcane cloak would go off it would in, like cancel withering step so i'm going to jump right on into a tier 14 map for you guys uh, i'd love to put on domination but i don't have any money because i was rolling my gear here we go it's also awakener level four so it's decent Remember that this build is not meant for clearing bosses. It's just meant for speed clearing through maps. And you can make it go much faster. It's just SSF, so I'm limited with my gear right now. My mana is spent. Oh my, what just happened there? That was really strange. I must have time to gather my will. Watch out for that, right? Did they explode yet? Okay, so now I can go in. One, two. These guys always suck, to be fair. They're not the best for damage over time builds. I guess in general, they just suck. Like, I don't know when I'm supposed to hit, because there are like two of them. Yeah, okay. Now I can go in. Normally, the single target is much better, but I don't know what's up with the totems. They're toxic. I guess that's actually more trouble I've had with bosses than I've I've really ever had. Normally you just have the target super hindered from your blight, and you can just kill it with Vol Blight. But I guess because of the way the totems work, unfortunately, it's not necessarily the best. Because everything is max life damage, you can literally run tier 16 content with very little investment. The only thing is... You're not going to do the best damage on single target. So that's the only spot where the build really lacks. And I mean, that's always been been known. But I would say you could get to a point where you should be able to clear 
Awaken or 8 uh, bosses relatively easily. Guardians are going to be tough. In general, it's, it's not a bossing build, unfortunately. It's got very limited scaling. But it's pretty fun for mapping. I'm not going to lie. It's... For me, for SSF, it's basically my in-between between, like, my big bossing character and, uh... My big bossing character is, like, not as good for clearing maps, and this one just feels super good for clearing maps. I wonder if Temple's better. Let's try a quick Temple map. Let's see how this turns out. Uh, boss life? So some things that you could change for Trade League is if you look at my large cluster jewels now, most of them just, it's just chaos damage with like a little minor affect, like 30% chaos damage and 10% cast speed and whatever. I'll explain the really good ones. There's one called Dark Ideation. It gives up to 80% chaos damage based off of your maximum mana. So you could run two of those in two large cluster jewels. That's 160% chaos. That's like quite a bit. Um, considering it's literally one node. The other one is, there's an enemies hindered by you, take 10% increased damage. That would be super good as well, since our Blight has Hinder, and that's a damage multiplier for us for single target, and in general for, like, for killing mobs, right? Then there's a monsters killed by you have a 10% chance to explode, dealing a quarter of their maximum life as damage. This is a massive one, as it, if you technically had two of those... You could drop one obliteration and roll literally any shield you want. Uh, and that would be the goal for me, is then you could incorporate Fortify, then you could make the build much more tanky, and you have an entire new gear with affixes you can kind of scour between and figure out essentially what you want on that. It sucks I am very limited in SSF, but I'm pretty happy with the, du the dual obliteration setup. The main reason as well for not going Occultist is I'm really sick of scaling curses. I don't know, I've been doing it for so many leagues, I just needed something new, and I know I'm on the mana trend now, but I honestly think it synergizes really, really, really well. Oh, another contract, okay. This build is super good for Legion. You basically walk into a legion, and it pops two-thirds of the legion. Um, I was thinking of incorporating, like, the, the black hole skill, but the problem with the black hole skill is the mobs die before they reach the center of the black hole, so it's really hard to, like, properly incorporate that. I was thinking of using, like, the black hole with, like, Vol Breach on top of a boss, and then spawning mobs into his face that just kill him. But it just, I don't know, just, I haven't gotten the Vol Breach yet, so it's hard to really test if that works. Your beam doesn't do much damage to me, sir. I guess I don't really do much damage to you, but... Eh, works out pretty well. The sustain is really good on the build. I like it a lot. Um, I know in the past when I've played, like, Occultist Death's Oath, I hated the fact that there really wasn't any form of sustain outside of going CI and relying on uh, Wicked Ward slash... Um, I forgot what the passive is for Occultist that gives them, like, 1% ES per second. But this one, this one's got a lot of scaling. Being mana-based, I mean, if I had an Essence Worm, I'd have two times the Bubble of Arcane Cloak, which is really awesome. You can scale the, you know, mana region on your boots. There's just, like, so much scaling to be done, which is really cool considering Death Soak usually doesn't necessarily have this type of scaling. Um, so I was really happy to see that. I was also thinking another potential damage setup I could do since my Blight is only on a 4-link. You could, yes, use Alepathy, but I'm trying to keep my life as high as I can. Um, another option, though, was Boots can roll Duration. Technically, you could put your Blight in your Boots with a Duration roll, and then it's like pseudo-5-linked, and whereas, yeah, Duration's not really a, that good, 
it's good for Vol Blight if it works for it, which it should, because when you click your Vol Blight, you're only using it one time per boss. So the longer your Vol Blight is on, the more damage it deals. And since you're going to take, like, you know, anywhere from 5 to 10, maybe 30 seconds to kill the boss, that duration could potentially really, really help. Uh, so that's one potential solution. Crafting a helmet with nearby enemies have minus chaos res would be a very big upgrade as another option since I don't really reduce chaos res at all with the exception of despair. Um, what else do we have here going for us? Min-maxing my cluster jewels like I was saying. I mean, imagine if I had like a like a hinder here and a 90 or 80% chaos damage from dark ideation times two. That would just be so much more damage compared to what I have. Um, these little baby clusters are actually crazy. I was thinking instead of rolling large clusters in, sorry, not large, but like notables, notables as in like replenishing presence. What if instead I just get, um, like this where it has five passives and I simply roll like juiced up passives. So like 25 to 50% increased effect of the, the small one with like a life roll with a mono roll. And then all of a sudden each baby node just becomes so strong. It's like taking an actual life, well, not an actual life node, but you get it. Um, base life is always really good. Base mana is really good. And Chaos Res is sick because it helps against Chaos Damage and it helps against Death Oath uh, Degen. So that's something I was thinking of instead of just scaling pure aura effect. Um, but I don't know, there's a, there's a lot of flexibility with it. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I was not expecting to be able to clear tier 16 content fast at all. But simply scaling the obliteration AoE is just really ridiculous. You can also use a weapon swap for like, um, I forgot what it's called. There's a lot of different weapons you can use. There's like Grace Spire. There's the staff with uh, Chaos Multi. I forgot what it's called exactly. I thought I had one. Let's see, staff. Where is it? I'm drunk. Cane. Something. Cane of Unraveling. Cane of Unraveling is a really good option. It's It's cheap. Uh, I think it gives plus the Chaos Gems for your Blight. I mean, if I had my Blight in a Cane of Unraveling, I would literally kill red bosses in like 4 seconds opposed to 20. Uh, just because of how much damage you get from using a Staff instead of 2 Obliterations. So, really happy with how the build's turning out. Next project is get an Essence Worm and make it more tanky. It does feel alright for Heisting too, you just walk in and pop everything. But, for Heisting it's scary because if you're rolling it and mobs have affixes for damage, and you don't have temp chains, and they're just like zooming at you and bum rushing you. So you got to be careful in that respect. But it hasn't been too bad. Um, anyway, though, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think about Death's Earth. I'm really happy with it. If you liked it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care. I'll see you guys all later.